What is up coordinators and naturals? I am just a simple new type. And in this video, we are going back to Mobile Suit Gundam Seed X Astray. Last time, we were introduced to Canard Pars, a member of the Eurasian Federation, and Prayer, Reverend Malkio's compatriot. In this episode, we will conclude our adventures with Mobile Suit Gundam Seed X Astray. Canard and Prayer fight in their respective mobile suits, and Prayer tries to use Taknojutsu to solve his problems. So let's get into this. Kennard is looking for Kira Yamato. He remembers a moment from his past. At a random junk guild base, Kennard has killed the entire crew. His wrist device starts beeping, and he begins to freak out. He decides that the only solution is to cut off his arm. A man comes in. He realizes that Kennard is a coordinator, and perhaps something beyond that. Kennard tells him that he is a failure, and that is when the man realizes that he is an ultimate coordinator. The mysterious man tells him to simply become the successful version of an ultimate coordinator. He tells Kennard that he could do that by killing Kira Yamato. This mysterious man is what fueled Kennard's desire to kill Kira. Last time, George Glynn distracted Kennard with random ship protocols. During this time, the Junk Guild has received the Dreadnought head from Guy and attached it to the Gundam. Kennard finally busts into the hangar. Lo ensures prayer that they could fix up the ship because he was holding back his firepower. Now that Lo gives him the go-ahead, he begins firing his Vulcans on Kennard. The Dreadnought has 76mm Vulcan rounds that'll put a giant hole through a man. Kennard contacts a remaining Eurasian soldier and tells him to overpower the engine controls. Doing this over time will eventually cause the engine to explode. Lo realizes what Kennard is trying to do. He tells Prayer to fire a shot with the beam rifle towards the starboard bow. Prayer fires it, shooting through the rehome and hitting Kennard's Agamemnon class ship. Lo tells Kennard to leave or he will do it again, destroying his ship and probably the rehome in the process. Kennard has no choice but to retreat. Everyone is safe, the virus is gone, and Liam is in medbay after getting shot. The red frame has been completely dissembled by Kennard. He recognizes that if they don't stop them now, they will continue coming after them. Lo wants to use the Dreadnought, but Prayer says that he has the ability to use its full potential, so he will go even though he is currently weak. Kazahana says that she will go with him. She tells a story about how Guy is so strong that he actually doesn't need anyone to help him, but one person can only do so much. But with the power of teamwork, one person can achieve greatness. They both head out in the Dreadnought. Kadard notices and heads back to the ship. Dreadnought and Hyperion Gundam engage in battle. Prayer focuses his seed factor and uses the Dragoon system. The bits are attached via wire, but they are a wireless system. Kennard realizes this after slicing the wire off. We talked about Dreadnought's Dragoon system last time, but this isn't the Dragoon system with the X that we will eventually see. This is a simple 2-bit system called Beam Reamers. Sounds dirty. Anyway, he reams his beam hard and all over Hyperion Gundam. Hyperion Gundam is in shambles, but Kennard's cockpit is intact. Prayer tells him to surrender immediately. Kennard thinks that he is going to die, so naturally he thinks of Kira Yamato, but he is able to get Hyperion barely up and running. The way the Armir Lumiere works is it sends out wireless bits to create the shield. He happens to have one bit still equipped, so he uses it to create a very tiny Armir Lumiere system. He charges towards the Dreadnought, but it is still useless. Hyperion is now in more shambles. Now is Prayer's chance to finish him off, but he passes out. Kazahana takes the reins and takes the mobile suit back to the ship, leaving Kennard alive. Kennard wakes up. He is on his Agamemnon class ship. He was picked up after the Junk Guild retreated. He is frustrated, wants to become the best ultimate coordinator, and will do anything to make it happen. But he is currently weak, and Hyperion needs to be fixed. Prayer wakes up after having a dream about Mobius mobile armors. They are at a supply station. Everyone is currently fixing up the ship, the Red Frame, and the Dreadnought. But Lo went to meet with an old friend, Prayer tells them about the quantum communication system that allows the Dragoon system to work wirelessly. The Zaf-made technology also allowed for very little latency between device and thought, but it requires someone with an incredible spatial awareness to make it work. Meanwhile, Lo is going to meet with his friend, who happens to be DaCosta. DaCosta is an underling of Andrew Watfield and a part of the Klein faction and the Three Ships Alliance, which is where Lo just so happens to be traveling. He looks up to see the Three Ships. Back at the Junk Guild station, a MA-2 Mobius comes rushing towards them. Prayer knows this is Kennard. 
The junk guild security comes out and gets wrecked instantly. Prayer decides to go out to talk to him. Luckily, the dreadnought is all fixed up and ready to go. Back on board the Eternal, Da Costa isn't the one who wanted to meet with Lo. It was actually Andrew Watfield. Watfield says there is something that both of you should know. Lo turns around to see Guy standing right there. Back at the Artemis, Prayer allows himself to be taken as a prisoner by Canard. Commander Garcia is happy that he finally got his hands on the mobile suit with an Enjammer Canceller. With glee, he tells his commanding officer about the mobile suit, but his commanding officer tells him that they have moved and made a deal with the Atlantic Federation to create new weapons for them. Since they already have Enjammer Cancellors, there is no longer a need for the Cat Mobile Suit Program and Special Operatives X. Garcia is mad and tells his men to go arrest Kennard for taking so long completing this mission. While this is happening, Kennard is currently interrogating Prayer. Prayer tells him the last time they fought, it only grew his hatred, so he decided not to fight instead. Kennard is suddenly informed that he has been ordered to be arrested. Back at the Eternal, we learn why Guy and Serpent's Tail was so hush-hush about why they stole the Dreadnought Head. We also learn that the Junk Guild saved Andrew Watfield, so that's a thing. It seems that Zaft created the unit, tested it, and immediately had it dismantled. Prayer picked it up and took the parts to Earth and Reverend Malkio. That is where Guy and Serpent's Tail came in and took the head of the Dreadnought. We know Malkio was going to use it to solve the energy crisis, but Guy was concerned of an attack on plants and didn't take any chances. It follows Guy's philosophy that we talked about last time about one guy ruining it for everyone. Remember, for this unit and this unit only, the nuclear bits are stored in the head. Guy knew exactly what he was doing. Also, so did I, and most likely the audience. I don't know, that seemed like the obvious reason to me. Was that a revelation to any of you? Watfield moves on and asks, what should he do with this? He pulls out that sweet, sweet data. And not just any data. It was data collected during Dreadnought's initial test phase. This will make the unit more powerful. He wants Lo to make a decision on what to do with the data. Back at the Artemis, Kennard is escaping on his Agamemnon class ship. They are too far out to use the curtain, so Garcia sends out Balsam and Hyperion Unit 2. The Cat 1 X2-3 Hyperion Gundam Unit 2 is just like Unit 1 and has the Armure Lumiere, the Tom Technica beam knife, the machine gun, and a beam cannon. Cannon. Unit 2 reaches Kennard's ship. He decides to go out. Prayer tries to stop him, but gives him the good old Gundam smack. His unit is missing an arm and a leg, and can't use the Armier Lumiere in its full form. He only has that little tiny bit. Kennard rushes in. He takes the tiny Armier Lumiere shield and inverts it to form a spike. He is able to pierce the shield and destroy Unit 2's head. The shield goes completely down, and Kennard goes in and stabs through the cockpit, killing Balsam. Kennard then grabs the unit and takes it back to his ship to use for extra parts. This is a pretty badass way to end an issue. Prayer watches in awe. Kennard comes in and attacks the lunar base. He is looking for an Enjammer Canceller. Prayer is taken aback by Kennard attacking his own troops. He also wonders why he just doesn't take the one from the Dreadnought. Kennard tells him that because one day the Dreadnought will have to fight him once again, and he wants it to be at its full potential. Pistis, Kennard's right-hand woman, explains to Prayer that the Atlantic Federation was never their allies and just sees them as pawns. She also seems she cannot forget Operation Spitbrick, where the Atlantic Federation used the Eurasian Federation as nuclear cannon fodder. Lo returns and is getting caught up by the junk guild of the situation regarding prayer. Lo thinks that handling the data that Watfield gave him is more important at the moment. He tells Kazahana to have faith in prayer for now. They start figuring out a weapons manufacturing facility they could use that is open to civilians. Lo thinks of one idea. Back at the lunar base, Commander Morgan Chevalier comes in piloting his dagger using a special gun barrel pack. His mobile suit is the standard dagger, but it is equipped with the gun barrel striker pack. This striker pack was originally used in Lou LaFlaga's modified Mobius Zero before switching to the Sky Grasper. It then went on to be used as Morgan's striker pack. It has four wired gun barrels. That is armed with missiles, beams, and a Gatlin gun. That is quite the upgrade. Like the Dragoon system, this requires a great deal of spatial awareness to use. Kennard activates the Armier Lumiere. More units come in to help Morgan, but he wants to handle it himself. Morgan is almost able to orchestrate an attack that would attack its bits, holding up the Hyperion's shield, but Kennard is barely able to dodge. Frustrated, Morgan detaches and throws a gun barrel into the shield, but does nothing. During the battle, it seems that Prayer and Kennard's seed factors are both connected. Back at the rehome, a ship stops them from entering airspace, but Lo is given clearance to enter. They see a series of M1 astrays surrounding the Ame no Mihashira orb, and more specifically, Rondo's base. The Hyperion Gundam is doing damage to anything and everything. 
It has installed the in-jammer canceller that it took from the moon and is now nuclear powered. It has reached its perfect form. Prayer in the Dreadnought tries to come in and reason with him. Back at the Ame no Mihashira, Lo wants the Junk Guild to allow them to use their facilities. Rondo doesn't want to use it after he helped kill her brother. Lo tells her that she is a great human being for everything that she is doing to Orb currently. Remember that at this point, all of Earth has fallen to the Atlantic Federation, including Orb. This is the only refuge outside of the Kusanagi that exists for Orb citizens. The alarms go off. There is an attack at the base. It has nothing to do with Lo, however. It is just a common occurrence at the Ami no Mihashira. It doesn't matter because Orb's defenses at this base are stacked. Rondo's forces go out and protect the base. Lo tells her that the Junk Guild and Orb have a lot in common. Both are people displaced throughout the Earth Sphere, but what brings them together is pride. Rondo allows Lo to use the facilities. Kennard is looking after Prayer, telling him that he can't die until he fights Kennard. While talking, a pursuer comes in after the ship. It is Guy in the blue frame. It seems that he is on a mission, specifically from Lo and the Junk Guild. It was for him to deliver a video directly to Prayer, which is just Lo telling him that he is building a special weapon for the Dreadnought and to come back soon. As Kennard wants to fight Prayer at his strongest, he allows Prayer to leave to upgrade his mobile suit. Back on board the Rehome, Prayer tells Lo that he doesn't want to kill anyone and doesn't want to pilot the Dreadnought anymore. Lo tells him that the mobile suit is just a tool and he could choose to use the tool however he likes. He decides that he will pilot the Dreadnought and try to use it to save Kennard's life. Lo refers to this unit as the X Astray because it has a big X on its back. But to Lo, he sees the blue frames, the red frames, M1s, and all of Orb's doing as something the good guys would do. And in this moment, Lo is just trying to say that Prayer is a good person. It is time. Prayer goes out to the L4 point near the abandoned colony zone to meet Kennard. Of course, Kennard just wants to fight while Prayer wants to talk it out. Kennard activates his Armir Lumiere shield. Prayer uses his beam reamers, but they can't penetrate it. His shield is now powered infinitely and no longer constrained to five minutes anymore. Kennard gets a hit on Dreadnought Gundam. Prayer finally uses his new Dragoon system. The system is obviously designed by Lo for the Dreadnought Gundam, but what we didn't mention is it was built off the data that was obtained by Watfield and given to Lo. Lo mentions that this new Dragoon system is more deadly than the Dreadnought itself. Prayer lectures Kennard about how an ultimate coordinator should act. He tells Kennard that he is a clone. Of course he is. It is actually never stated who he was cloned from, but it seems to be heavily insinuated that it is Mulafon. Flaga. Remember the dream he had of the Mobius Zeros flying on the moon? People believe that this is a memory of the Battle of the Grimaldi Front where Mu was a part of the Mobius Zero Corps. Kennard says that they are the same and thus must kill each other. Prayer says, nah man. Kazahana takes a shuttle out to Prayer. Kisato tries to stop her, but Lo allows her to go and tells her not to look away, knowing what is about to happen. Kennard believes that he is destined to fight, but Prayer is trying to get him to understand that nothing is predetermined and compassion can help him. Prayer uses his four Dragoon bits to isolate Hyperion and create a shield over his shield. Kennard rages and fires all weapons, but everything is isolated and hurting him. He decides to expand the Amir Lumiere system, causing a giant explosion. Hyperion is barely intact, but suddenly the nuclear reactor is about to explode. Prayer comes in and tries to save Kennard. The nuclear reactor goes off. Kennard is saved in the aftermath, but Prayer is dying. Not because of the nuclear explosion that just happened. No, no, everyone one survives that. Prayer tells Kennard that he is a clone, but he was a flawed clone and his cells are mutating and killing him. His time for this earth is just about up. Kennard wonders why he saved him. Prayer tells him that everyone is connected through compassion. Prayer dies in Kennard's hands. He grabs his body as Kazahana comes to him. Kennard tells her that Prayer was a clone and clones are meant for death. He wonders why he gets to live. Back at Serpent's Tale, Kazahana gives a report to Guy. As she tells them that Prayer was killed in action, she breaks down and cries. On Earth, Kennard delivers the Injammer Canceler to Reverend Malkio, along with Prayer's necklace. Reverend Malkio tells Kennard that he has inherited Prayer's will and that Prayer is right by his side. While walking on the beach, he happens to see Kira Yamato and Atherin Zala talking. This is the man that he promised that he would one day kill. What does Kennard do? He simply walks past him and onto his next adventure as he is now a free man.
And that will do it for Adventures in Mobile Suit Gundam X Astray. I really enjoyed this one, but like low saving Kira in Astray, having the Junk Guild save Watfield is such an obvious retcon, and unlike the Kira moment, this is stretching it. Nonetheless, I may actually like what is happening behind the scenes of Gundam Seed more so than what is happening with Kira. But who knows, that may change as we dive into our next adventure, Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Destiny Astray. But that will do it for this episode. Remember, coordinators, if you give someone a metaphorical hug, be sure to pair it with a force field hug as well. Peace.